thanks for watching edupedia world videos i am vibhuti parekh and today we are going to continue with our discussion on tree theories which was ended in our first part today we are going to discuss regarding comparative advantage what is the comparative cost advantage theory the comparative cost advantage theory is firstly systematically formulated by the english economist david ricardo in his principle of political economy and taxation published in 1817 it was later refined by j s mill marshall and others in a nutshell the doctrine of comparative cost maintains that if trade is left free each country in the long run tends to specialize in the production and export of those commodities in whose production it enjoys a comparative advantage in term of real costs and to obtain by importation those commodities which could be produced at home at a comparative disadvantage in terms of the real cost and that such specialization is to the mutual advantage of the countries participating in it the ricardian theory was actually based on many assumptions and those assumptions were first of all labor is the only element of the cost of production secondly they believed that goods are exchanged against one another according to the relative amounts of labor embodied in them labor is perfectly mobile within the country but perfectly immobile between countries they believe that the labor is homogeneous and production is subjected to the law of constant returns they also assumed that international trade is free from all barriers there is no transport cost involved and there is a full employment there is a perfect competition and there are only two countries and two commodities ricardo's illustration of comparative cost theory using the two country two commodity model shows that trade between nations can be profitable if one of the two nations can produce both the commodities more efficiently than the other nation provided that it can produce one of these commodities with comparatively greater efficiency than the other commodity the law of comparative advantage indicates that a country should specialize in the production of those goods in which it is more efficient and leave the production of other commodity to the other country the two nations will then have both goods by engaging in trade and business ricardo in his celebrated two country two commodity model has taken the hypothetical example of production cost of cloth and wine in england and portugal the example is as shown on a slide from this example it is evident that portugal has an absolute superiority in both branches of production however a comparison of the ratio of the cost of production of wine that is 80 by 120 with the ratio of cost of production of cloth that is 90 by 100 in both the countries reveal that though portugal has an absolute superiority in both the branches of production it may pay higher to her to concentrate on the production of wine in which she has a comparative advantage over england while importing cloth from england which has a comparative advantage in cloth production england will gain by specializing in producing cloth and selling it in portugal in exchange for wine in the absence of trade between england and portugal one unit of wine commands 1.2 and 0.88 unit of cloth in england and 
Portugal respectively. In the event of trade taking place under the assumption that within each country labor is perfectly mobile between various industries, Portugal will gain if it can get anything more than 0.88 units of cloth in exchange for 1 unit of wine and England will gain if it has a part with less than 1.2 unit of cloth against 1 unit of wine. Hence, any exchange ratio between 0.88 units and 1.2 units of cloth against 1 unit of wine represents a gain for both the countries. The actual rate of exchange will be determined by the reciprocal demand. Thus, according to the comparative cost theory, free and unrestricted trade among nations encourages specialization on a larger scale. It thereby tends to bring about the most efficient allocation of world resources as well as maximization of world production. Redistribution of relative product demands resulting in great quality of product prices among trading nations. And lastly, a redistribution of relative resources demands to correspond with relative product demands resulting in a relatively greater equality of resource prices among trading nations. This theory was based on certain evolutions and those evolutions were the Ricardian theory though based on a number of wrong assumptions has been regarded as an important landmark in the development of the theory of international trade. It was given a remark that if theories like girls can win beauty contests Comparative advantage was certainly rate high in that it is an elegantly logical structure. It was also added that the theory of comparative advantage has in it a most important glimpse of truth. A nation that neglects comparative advantage may have to pay a heavy price in terms of living standards and potential rate of growth. A comparatively cost doctrine However, it is not complete in itself, it has been severely criticized, particularly for its wrong assumptions. Further, as Graham has pointed out, even if we assume that all the assumptions are true, it will not lead to complete specialization if one of the two countries is small and the other one is big. The small countries may be able to specialize fully, but the big countries cannot since it cannot sell its entire surplus in the small country and cannot get from the small country the quantity of goods which it can produce, though at a comparatively higher cost. The theory of comparative cost fixes only the limit within which the exchange ratio must settle under international trade. It does not show how the exact point within these two limits is determined. In other words, we can say that the theory does not say how the term of trades are determined. Though the Ricardian theory maintains that comparative differences in labor cost from the basis of international trade, it does not explain what underlies such differences in relative costs of production. However, as Ellsworth and Lith points out, an important feature of the classical trade theory is that Ricardo, Mill and their followers appear to have regarded it not primarily as an explanation of the actual pattern of trade but as a convincing demonstration of the gains from trade and they have used it as a powerful argument for a more rational trade policy in a tariff-ridden world. A next trade theory is opportunity cost theory. One of the main drawbacks of the regarding comparative cost theory was that it was based on the labor theory of value. 
which stated that the value or price of a commodity was equal to the amount of labor time going into the production of the commodity. Gottfried Herbler gave new a life to the comparative cost theory by restating the theory in terms of opportunity cost in 1933. The opportunity cost of anything is the value of the alternatives or other opportunities which have to be forgone in order to obtain that particular thing. For example, assume that a given amount of productive resources can produce either 10 units of cloth or 20 units of wine. Then the opportunity cost of 1 unit of cloth is equal to 2 units of wine. Thus, the opportunity cost approach defines cost in terms of value of the alternatives of other opportunities which have to be forgone in order to achieve a particular thing. According to this theory, the basis of international trade is the difference between nations in the opportunity cost of production of commodities. Accordingly, a nation with a lower opportunity cost for a commodity has a comparative advantage in that commodity and a comparative disadvantage in the other commodity suppose that the opportunity cost of one unit of x is two units of y in a country a and 1.5 units of y in country b then country a must specialize in production of y and imports it requirements of x from b and b should specialize in the production of x and import y from country a rather than producing it at home to sum up the copo- the opportunity cost theory demonstrates that trade is beneficial as long as opportunity cost differ the superiority of harbel's approach is that it recognizes the existence of many different kinds of productive factors whereas ricardo considered only labor the opportunity cost theory tells us that even if we discard the labor theory of value as being invalid and rely on the opportunity cost theory the comparative cost theory is still valid In short, the opportunity cost theory is a refinement of the Ricardian theory. As far as the basis of international specialization and trade are concerned, the logic behind the comparative cost approach and the opportunity cost approach are same. But there are some major differences between the absolute advantage theory and the comparative advantage theory. Let's discuss what are they. the differences are absolute advantage and comparative advantage are two terms that are widely used in international trade both terms deals with production goods and services absolute advantage is a condition in which a country can produce particular goods at a lower cost in comparison to other country on the other hand comparative advantage is a condition in which a country produces particular goods at a lower opportunity cost in comparison to other countries while absolute advantage is a condition where the trade is not mutually beneficial comparative advantage is a condition in which the trade is completely mutually beneficial comparative advantage can be described as the ability of a particular country to produce a certain product better than other country comparative advantage generally compares the output of production of the same type of goods or services between two countries a country will have an absolute advantage over other country when it produces the highest number of goods after the same resources are supplied to both the nations Absolute advantage also means more goods and services in an efficient way. Unlike absolute advantage, comparative advantage also looks into the overall production of the service or goods within a time frame. 
when compared to comparative advantage absolute advantage is concerned with multiple goods while cost is a factor involved in absolute advantage opportunity cost is a factor that is involved in comparative advantage unlike absolute advantage comparative advantage is always reciprocal and mutual it was adam smith who first declared absolute advantage in context of international trade robert torrens described comparative advantage for the first time in 1815 in an essay about corn laws but the concept of absolute advantage is attributed to david ricardo who explained the concept in his book named on the principle of political economy and taxation we can summarize the differences by saying that comparative advantage can be described as an ability of a particular country to produce a certain product better than the other country a country will have an absolute advantage over other country when it produces the highest number of goods after the same resources are supplied to both of them while absolute advantage is a condition where the trade is not mutually beneficial comparative advantage is a condition in which the trade is mutually beneficial while cost is a factor involved in absolute advantage opportunity cost is a factor that is involved in comparative advantage unlike absolute advantage comparative advantage is always reciprocal and mutual that is all for today's discussion